So that entity uh, did go on pause for a little bit. As we both mentioned, you did go on to have a solo career. I believe it was 2007. You won a Juno for Morning Orbit. Yeah, um, I think so. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, how did you decide to put that on pause and just follow kind of your own path for a little bit? Uh, again, it was just, you know, uh, you're trying to challenge yourself creatively and we'd done a bunch of records, two records, I think two, I'm not sure. Um, but I had, I had songs that did not feel like they were right for the band. You know, I wanted, and I wanted them to sound a specific way. And with the band, because of the instruments that are involved, you know, you, you're, you are, it's, it's a great thing because you have this, you have this understanding of how everything works, mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't want to understand how everything works. You want to be exploring territory where things don't always work, or you want to be going in a completely different direction. And for those songs, I wanted to go somewhere else. And so, you know, and I just, you know, I think it's natural that everyone wants to explore different things in their life. You just do. Explore yourself. Well, just try different shit. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think it has to be, has to be that philosophical even. It's just you want to do different things because life is what it is. You want to take different paths. Mm -hmm. So we never broke up. We just, you know, I would just go and do some, I would do solo records and come back and play with the band. Okay. Yeah. And there was that, that respect once again uh, amongst the band, enabling you to be able to go, yeah, man, do your thing. We, we got your back. You, yeah. need, you need keys? Great. We're there. Yeah. You need yeah. guitars? Yep. We're there. <laughs> Honestly, it really is such a rarity in yeah. our industry. There are so many egos involved, and even in the creative process and being able to say, well, hey, you know, it's like, this is my band. I've, I've known bands where they play with a, uh, a specific star within Quebec, and they are not allowed to play drums, you know, for another band. It was just like, no, you're my drummer, and they're, they're not even on the... <laughs> on the payroll, you know what I mean? Right. When they're not playing and wow. it's just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So that's why I might chuckle and laugh because it's such a rarity and it's just a scarcity also in the, in this industry to have so much respect and, res, uh, you know, and support within one entity and one group. And you're, you're absolutely right that when you are working with a, a sound and a band that has Everybody knows where to go. It's sort of like, yeah, we're, this is a different song we're writing. This is a different song we're producing. But there's always this, this view of like, well, this is what Moist sounds like. We know what Moist sounds yeah. like. So we're not going to start pulling out, you know, a mandolin, you know, and it's <laughs> like trying to experiment and try to change it. We know what our audience likes. We know what we like. And that's the path we're going to do. And, and it's great that you were able to go out and really go like a 180 degree too. And it wasn't like another rendition of Moist. It was David Usher's voice, but in a, t a whole different light. Were the lyrics uh, any, w was there a big change and challenge for you to step out of uh, the lyrical sense for Moist and, and trying to do something different? Or did you even, you just attack the songs in the same form? Yeah. Writing is something that you do every day mm -hmm. and it just comes out and what, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not, um, you don't need, I don't need a mystical setting for it. You just write because you love to write mm -hmm. You write because you have to write. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't, I don't think about them as different or I'm just following the thread of whatever comes out, mm -hmm. you know, things come out and you're just, you know, again, you're trying to look for those things that are, you're looking for that one thread that's amazing that you are, you think is something, whatever that is, mm -hmm. you, you can identify something in one little turn of phrase on the guitar meets a lyric, meets an idea, and then you follow that thread. And I don't, beyond that, I don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think much more than that. You're constantly looking for that thing that you think is going to be turned into a great song. Sure. Right. Yep. Inspiration is, is, is often that, that fine thread, you know, that we, we use, uh, to be able to, to write songs when you're on tour and you're supporting a record and you're, you're going out and now you're supporting a record and you're also writing at the same time that you're like supporting a record. How important is it for a band to detach themselves from music and live life and to have experiences to be able to write about stuff? 
sometimes you can write tons of, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. Writing goes, is a cyclical thing. Mm -hmm. You could be out on road, on the road and be completely busy and songs are just coming mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you could be at home with tons of time and nothing is coming and you can't find a thing mm -hmm. or, you know, it, it, it's, it's so dependent on, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's this mix. I always think of it as this mix of this, you know, inspiration meets just grind. Right. Right. It's those two things mixed together. You grind all the time and you hope you're going to have inspiration. Right. 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 If you don't grind all the time, you will never know, you know, you won't know when you're going to get struck by mm -hmm. something that you like, mm -hmm. but you grind all the time because you're hoping that something's going to work. And for a long time, it may not. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly everything's clicking. You don't know why. I don't right. know why. Right. Yeah. I mean, speaking of things that did work, uh, one of your biggest songs, Black, Black Heart, I said, that's on like the soundtrack of like my life. Oh, nice. um, what was the inspiration for that? Because that one really, that took off. Yeah, that was a that was a huge song. Mm -hmm. um, I was traveling. What we were traveling. It was it was at the time. Moist was touring at the time, and we were traveling. I think we were in France, and I was. I remember because I was in my like on the tour bus, and I wrote that chorus. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I think it was around the time that um, Eminem Stan was out, mm. and he had done the. So he had done the the, the collab with um, Dido, mm -hmm. right? And so that song was sort of in my head because um, I loved that song. Uh, the juxtaposition of the the you know her voice, his voice, mm -hmm. the meaning and the and the rhythm. Mm -hmm. I showed it to Jeff. I think Jeff was producing. I'm not sure. <laughs> and Jeff had the had the idea for the the sample from mm -hmm. Locke May because he'd been fucking around with that, mm -hmm. you know, fitting it into a four source signature, which mm -hmm. is not so easy. Mm -hmm. And those sort of things all fell together. And then I wrote the verses and yeah, the whole thing fell together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I know like we talk sometimes about uh, having reference tracks uh, for our work to help us get inspired. Do you find that much like the, the song with Dido, do you oftentimes have reference tracks? Do you sometimes it, the inspiration just kind of comes out of nowhere? I mean, I'm just sort of listening to what I'm listening to. Okay. And, and I don't, I don't, I don't think of it as specifically as, as reference tracks or mm -hmm. those kind of things. I'm just sort of listening to stuff and I'm sure that that seeps in naturally mm -hmm. to, you know, where your brain is and what your, you know, the kind of sounds you're liking and the kind of, you know, intonation maybe or whatever. But I don't think of it so specifically usually. That was a, a specific instance where, you know, I was like, I was definitely listening to that track and it sort of stuck with me, the, 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 the outsideness of her and him together yeah. mm -hmm. sort of was that sort of push and something. pull yeah, yeah there's yeah. something there it's a, it's a it's a fun tug of war exactly of having this operatic vocal in a rock you know exactly type setting and exactly yet it worked yes 